But who is Diana herself? I mean, th is can every woman, every man see themselves in Diana? That's the idea. I, my, again, my brilliant daughter calls it a psychography. It's a metaphor for everything that happens in one human mind, male or female. So we all have a part of ourselves that's vulnerable and nur nurturing and kind and t archetypally female. Right. We all have a part of ourselves that is ego, that is striving, that is ambitious, that, it, that wants to show up you know, as an important person. Mm -hmm. And the book is an example of what happens when one person begins to move toward soul and away from ego. So all of it is inside your own head. <laughs> and, and you talk in the book, Martha talks about what she calls our furies. I have my back over here. Which is that, that voice inside all of our heads that says, you're not enough. Who do you think you are? What are you doing? You're fat. You're old. You're thin. You're gross. Whatever. You, you'll they never, never get that promotion. Thin. They never, never say, say you're thin. They never say you're thin. That's true. <laughs> not even to you. They don't even say it to you. OK, forget it then. But they say everything, right? They say, and you're like that, and you blame it, right, on your siblings, your parents, you blame it on your husband, your ex husband, whomever. You just blame it like, and you can't control it. And you refer to them as the Furies, right. which I think is a really good word for yeah. it. And how do we quiet the Furies? How does the Furies okay. propel her? And how does she learn to manage them? Well, I am going to, spoiler alert, I'm, I'm going to show you. She hasn't finished the book, so I hate, uh, there are all kinds of like surprise twists as far as I'm concerned. So here's the thing, when you get to a certain point of awakening, right. what you realize is that the Furies are screaming at you all the time because they're trying to get your attention to the truth, but the truth is the exact mirror opposite of everything they're saying. So at a certain point, she wakes up to that, and they, s they tell her, you're nothing, and it turns into her mind into your everything. And they tell her, you're, you're an idiot. And it turns into her, in her mind, to, you're a genius. And instead of the screaming, she hears them begin to sing. So you don't quiet the Furies. You begin to understand what they're trying to tell you. And they become the music of your life that is always loving and encouraging you. That is a great note what you just heard. Everybody can leave here today with all of those things that are going on in your mind and turn them around and use them to your advantage. It's, that's a major pathway to, to awakening. Martha and I had dinner last night, and you talked a lot about the world that we're all inhabiting right here now in 2016, and how you envision a different kind of world yeah. that we can all collaborate in, exist in. And that's one of the things that we try to do with this conversation series, is build uh, to a more what I call collaborative, compassionate, considerate world, right? Right. That's different from the world we live in, and we all have a role in that. Yeah. What kind of world do you envision uh, with all of your work, and what are you trying to bring us all towards? Well, in the book, I talk about getting bewildered. Um, the the task when we leave what torments us is to become bewildered in the sense of I don't know what's going on. So you ask me what the world looks like, I, I don't know, I'm bewildered. But then it becomes bewildered. Right. So within each of us, there is a part that has been tamed by our parents, by our religions, by our cultures, and it constricts us in some way. In some ways it's great, and in some ways it's not. And when we go wild, when we find the part of ourselves that is absolutely true to us and start peeling away all the socialization, then bewilderment changes us into something we cannot imagine. It's like the caterpillar trying to imagine flying. Until you've gone through the transformation, you cannot become the, the thing with wings. And I think our whole culture has reached a point of crisis ecologically, philosophically, and everything. Politically. Where yes, where yes. we can't just be a bigger caterpillar. It's got to become something with wings. It's not going to look like anything in the past. And I'm obsessed.